Gotta be true to yourself. In a world there's nothing else. nothing else. Gotta play the game right, gotta make your path. You scratch, you dig, you lay in your ground, you busting your rounds. Nobody gonna stop you. No ops, no cops, everything about you. Looking good, you good, she good. She good. Y'all people really wanna know the reason. What's that? It's that ripple effect. That's just that ripple, ripple. That's just that ripple effect. What you do, come back, come triple. Back, triple. Hey, what's going on? It's your girl Kid out back in the Ripple Effect. You already know what it is, and you already know the vibes. I got a special one for you today. This is one I've been waiting to do for quite some time, actually. Um, it's talk about someone who's been on TV for a minute, famous, famous for a lot of different reasons, right? A lot of people have mixed emotions about this guy, right? And a lot of times, it's not what he's just saying about sports. It can be about the weed, right? Or it can be about different topics that can sometimes get him into trouble right with the ray rice situation or it can be times where he's talking about Kyrie and people think that it's just personal right or it can just be times where he's just going back and forth with a kevin durant you know and then you get to hear the inside you know track to that because a lot of people just they don't understand tv they don't understand media and they don't really understand how it works and I get it. And I'm not even trying to say that because you're supposed to like everybody because that's just not true. That's just not true. But me doing what I do, right? Um, I did pick up the book. I actually picked it up a while ago. Read it a while ago. Stephen A. Smith, Straight Shooter, Autobiography, all him. He actually has a, um, he narr narrated uh, an audio version as well. So if you're not really big on reading, don't worry about it. Sit back and listen. Um, you do it anyway if you watch ESPN. The man's all over ESPN, right? He has his own show, Stephen A's World, you know, but, you know, enough trying to, you know, big him up. But <laughs> but that's pretty much what this episode is about because it's just understanding him as a person because when you get to all these mixed emotions about, you know, where he may land and you, I had to know. I wanted to get into his childhood. I wanted to see what went on then. You know, the fact that he has so many sisters, right? And he actually did have a brother. Um, There's it, so many things. And I think a lot of questions will be answered for you if you did read the book, if, if you had any questions or or just concerns or, or if you just wondered, like, wait, why is he like this or what happened, you know? Um, but you're talking to a guy, you know, who is quite successful, you know? I know it's very easy to point the finger and try to say, you know, what someone could have done better or he could have said it this way or why did he have that take? One thing you got to you got to respect about the guy, for the most part, he's pretty honest. He's pretty blunt, you know, and he's not necessarily going to change his opinion just because you would disagree with him. He may open his mind enough, you know, to at least say, OK, when he's wrong, he's wrong. Right. But at the end of the day, it's a debate show what he does on first take. You're going to agree or disagree and it is tv folks i know a lot of people don't understand tv and how it works it, it's a persona most of the time of what these guys have you know it's no different than watching an actor act you're not really you know if leonardo DiCaprio, you know is murdering somebody you're not going to walk around calling him a murderer right you know I mean it's in good sense i mean some people probably take it too far with the characters but that's that's pretty much what it is he's it's it's a caricature of himself right um He's tapping into to all these different, you know, uh, <laughs> characters inside himself. And if you were to tap into yourself, you'll find all these different characters. And if you don't believe me, you know, ask the people around you. You know, everybody can be animated in such a way, you know, where they can just kind of let it out. And it works for him. And he makes a lot of money doing it. And he started off as a columnist, you know. Um, he is a re very respected journalist in terms of what he used to do, especially with the Philadelphia Inquirer. You know, different athletes that he used to cover, one of the biggest, you know, Allen Iverson. Listen, guys, it's it's just it's just interesting. But just to give you an aside, um, the whole thing with Kevin Durant, and I think a lot of it was misunderstood. Um, remember, this is, like I said, if you understand TV, you understand ratings, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. And at the end of the day, there's really no such thing as, you know, bad unless it's just... Well, I'm not going to say that because there is cancel culture. But you understand where I'm saying. It's 
if he's still on, he still has a chance to clear it up and people are going to want to tune in. That's the whole idea, right, folks? So, you know, not saying that KD didn't say what he really meant when they were kind of having their back and forth and trying to discredit Stephen A. And Stephen A went back, you know, and calling, you know, the weakest move. If you, if you don't really know the whole situation I'm talking about, let me just tell you. So when Kevin Durant decided to leave the Oklahoma City Thunder and go over to the Golden State Warriors, especially just losing to them, right, after they were up 3-1, right? And that was after a phone call, Draymond Green in the parking lot after losing the finals to Cleveland. Hey, KD, you should come play with us, you know, and KD decided to go over there and play with them. Okay, cool. Um, they had that back and forth exchange. Ratings were pretty high. If if you're a TV person, that's pretty much what you're looking at. If you're if you're a fan of one or the other, you're kind of just playing this back and forth thing, you know, and you get kind of getting caught up in it, and that's kind of the point. So, I say all that to say this. So, when Stephen A. Stephen A.'s um, mother passed, you know, R.I.P. to her, um, a few years back, um, and he when he showed up to work. And he had to, you know, do one of the uh, ESPN, one of the NBA on ESPN at night, like he normally does. He said he wasn't ready for that. He wasn't, he probably came back to work too soon. But I guess he just, he's one of those workaholics and you can kind of tell. He, he's definitely, he puts everything into his work. His, his job is, I'm not going to say his life because I'm sure he has other interests and other things that he does outside of his life. But it takes up a lot of his life, I could say that, for the most part. But when he was at the game, he actually ran into Kevin Durant's mother. Yeah. The mother of the guy that, you know, that he called the weakest superstar, like the weakest move done by a superstar, right? And she knew um, what Stephen A. Smith was going through. She, she had knowledge of his mother passing and she didn't say anything to him initially. She saw his face. She gave him a hug. Um, and just just to know that, that not only gives you an idea of who Kevin Durant's mother is, but also more of an idea of who Stephen A. Smith is, right? And, and knowing the importance of what he does you know, and how it has an impact on her son's life. So you have to put all that into context. Even though that there was a little joke and she did say like, oh, but if you say something about my son again, you know, you're gonna have to, you know, and he did smile or whatever, but, you know, but it was like those things that he mentions in the book that w you'll never probably hear on First Take or on ESPN for that matter. And more to that point, um, about his book when he goes into his childhood and he talks about the relationship or lack thereof of his father and all the different you know trials and tribulations that that's really all I can call it at this point because I don't want to give too many things out you know because why would you read it right if I'm telling you everything but it'll definitely give you an idea of why he is the man that he is and why he takes it to heart when people try to you know, um, you know, like, you know, when they say he's a sexist or when he says, you know, uh, certain things that definitely get blown out of proportion, um, knowing how many sisters that he has, knowing that he values his sister's opinion so much and knowing how his father was towards his sisters in comparison to him or just the relationship that, um, that his father had with his mother or lack thereof, you know, um, it was, it was crazy. It was really, really crazy. It wasn't of a typical family structure that you, that you would think that you would want to imagine, you know, um, especially knowing that he went to college, you know, um, Winston-Salem, you know, historically black college. Um, it's like, what happened, you know, what sort of guidance did he have, you know, um, outside of his mother, of course, because his mother was always there for him. I mean, he, 
emphasize that in the book. The book was dedicated, you know, to her. The book was actually, um, took this long with a, because he made a promise to her that he would not put out this book until she, she, until she passed away. And he kept that promise. And I can see why, you know, um, because she knew Stephen A. Smith wasn't going to hold any punches. He's just not known for that. I don't think he's built for that. He's just... <laughs> he's just straight from the hip. You know, no pun intended. You know, he's... If you watch him on first take, you already know. He holds no punches. Like He's going to tell it how it is. It, I'm not necessarily considering your feelings on it because this is my truth. This was my life and this is what I, I had to endure. You know what I mean? And and that's hard because you do care about the people around you and you don't want to offend anybody and you, you certainly don't want to feel bad or take any credit away from anyone else, you know, from their story and what they had to endure and maybe that wasn't, you know, conducive to you and your lifestyle. But so sometimes circumstances are just so unfortunate. And and I think that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to let you know, like, listen, this is what I had to endure. This is what I had to deal with. And yet here I am. You know, like what he saw at an early age, not only what he saw what he had to still pick himself up and and work right put himself through school tried to make it as an athlete he knew he would never be the athlete that would make it to that elite level but he loved the game he loved to talk about the game I mean shoot he learned basketball from one of the best like ever so say what you want when he talks NFL, but when he talks the NBA, I'm not talking about when he's just going crazy on, you know, one guy or another. I mean, like the game itself. When he's talking about the game, just know that he learned from the best. That, that's all I'm going to say. You know, and it doesn't mean that you can't disagree with him because, of course, you can disagree with him. But just understand that he's just not just pulling this stuff out of nowhere. He studied the game. He's been a journalist for only over 30 years. He he has a lot of insight, you know, and sure, why would players agree with him all the time? They're not supposed to, right? I mean, they have a job to do. They're supposed to be loyal to their team. They're a brand within themselves. They have to be loyal to themselves and their own brand, and they got to do what they got to do, so, you know? Just the same thing with Stephen A. Smith. He has to do what he has to do. And it's, it's just remarkable. I can just tell you that part. It's remarkable because some of the stuff that he said that his father did you know, to his mom or or just non existent, even when they're not existent. It was you just feel for him. You feel for him because you're not just looking at Stephen A the man, you're kinda looking at Stephen A when he, you know when he when he was a child, you know, and this is his foundation. You know, so when you come up from such trauma and different things that you have to experience at such a young age that's it's not it's not some of the things that you would want a kid to see or or have to deal with you know um so it just makes sense it's some of the things that he's done you know and he's had to learn from and and he does have two daughters and he's always said that he never wanted to be um, the man his father was, which is the reason why he was saying why he um, he always wanted to make sure he did right by his, by his girls. He he never necessarily wanted to get married. Not never, but you know, like he, he was always apprehensive because he made that promise to his mother that if he did, he would not be that guy. So you got to respect him on that front to know, know yourself or just be that self-aware to know, hey, Maybe this ain't for me right now, you know, until I can figure out my own stuff. And maybe that book was very therapeutic enough for him to not only analyze his life in such a way where he can see where he went wrong and kind of, you know, and try to see how to right the ship and try to become the best version of himself. I mean, in a sense, that's what we're kind of all trying to do. 
but some 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 of us like him i mean he has to do it in a very public form and i think a lot of people don't have much appreciation for that because they have no you know no perspective on that like how do you it's it's hard it's difficult like that it's it's wild in a lot of ways but um even in that right ray rice situation it was unfortunate you know that he was suspended and how he he was always on the come up like if you watch Stephen A. Smith and you watch First Take, you're just assuming that, oh, this guy's always been great, always been good. Not necessarily with everything you agree with. I mean, and just in terms of he's getting paid. Like, <laughs> he's the guy, he's the guy at ESPN. You know, yeah, you have Michael Greenberg and you have the other guys that are there, but he is the guy. I'm not 100% sure, but I know he's like one of the highest paid. You know, you have Michael Wilbong, you have uh, Kornheiser, you have, you have a lot of these guys excuse me, that I've been there, and rightfully so, but he goes through, I mean, everything in the book he talks about, because it's not just his personal life, he talks about his professional life, right, and who had his back, and who did it, and how, you know, um, him having the personality that he does, and unfortunately, he is, he is black, right, so he gets a lot of criticism, for a lot of the things that he does because he's very boisterous, right? He's very outspoken. So he's always considered to be too outspoken, too loud, right? That's always the the thing that he gets. But there's this point. I mean, if you watch if you watch or listen to sports radio, there's a lot of guys that are loud and very demonstrative. Like that's that's how you get ratings up. And if you've ever been to any barbershop, you know that sometimes that happens too. Conversations concerning sports get real loud and crazy. You know, I mean, it's all fun and games, but I'm just saying like, but these are some of the things that people knock him for. You know, and I'll also talk about um, with the Kyrie situation. He actually admitted on a podcast, he doesn't go to, into this in the book, just so you know. But um, but just give it more context because um, you don't just read the book. You got to do your other research, do your due diligence, you know, because when he was going on his book tour, he talked about a lot of different things because people ask him a lot of different questions. And there's not too many things that he doesn't talk about. When it comes to his personal life, I think the book is probably the most you're going to get because he doesn't really like to, you know, go into that, which is cool because I don't really want to go into that personally. But... When it comes to like the Kyrie situation, he did admit that him and uh, and Kyrie do have, you know, um, a bad relationship in terms of something happened. He will never tell it. He said he's not. You're not going to hear it from me. Um, but he did admit it, so he did let you know that there is bad blood, you know. And it wasn't just with Kyrie; it was with Kyrie's father as well. And I don't know. I honestly, that's. I'd rather not do too much research on that, mainly because you're going to get a situation like the Andrew Wiggins situation, you know, and obviously, and shout out to Andrew Wiggins and his family and, and his father, and I wish him nothing but well wishes, but it's just unfortunate. I only bring that up because it's like, it's unfortunate, but you see how people can come to all these crazy conclusions. Like, that's why I don't, I don't, I don't dig too, too far. I feel like if it's going to pop up, you're probably going to hear it from the people concerning that situation. And that's and when it comes to stuff like that, I'd rather hear it from that and not hear it from any outside source because that just sounds like clickbait. Anybody will do anything for clicks or likes nowadays, so I kind of just I just stay in my lane. I stay away from that. It's not even worth it, trust me. Um but some people it is. Uh, and you know, you do what you do, but to me, no. I stay away from that, but but yeah, but I thought that was very big of him because um, a lot of people say that they feel like it is personal. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, some people can say that, you know, did Kyrie do himself any favors or, you know, I mean, a lot of people came down on Kyrie, though, that, that probably don't have a personal relationship, you know, in that nature that went sour. Um, so I, I don't I don't know, really know what to make of that, you know, besides... Because it's not like he doesn't talk about... Because when he's talking about basketball strictly, he doesn't... It, he's, it seems like it's on point. He is box office. Kyrie is that dude. 
the only reason why people talk about him not playing so much is because he's that good. Because trust me, if you were not good, we wouldn't care if you didn't play. We would say thank you. <laughs> you know, don't waste my time. But we care about you playing because I, I hate to say it, but it's almost like at the end of his career or when his career does end, it's going to be left with a lot of question marks. And I don't hope for that because as any basketball fan, you want to see these guys live up to their greatest potential. You want them to leave it all out there on the court and to say that, yo, this guy this guy put it all out there. And this is what he stands for and this is what it's about and this is going to be his legacy. You know, I mean, obviously his legacy is going to be far more than just basketball, but but this is what you've been doing at the highest of highest of levels and nobody can do what you do, Kyrie. So, you know what I mean? So I think that's what that's why and in a sense you kind of should just take it as a compliment and kind of just weed out all the other comments um and i feel like that's what and you know Stephen a does go hard i'm not gonna lie but then i feel like that's when that persona comes out that caricature of himself that comes out and the ratings were super high guys excuse me i'm not even trying to say whether it's right or wrong i mean it depends on what business you're in you know if you're more into ethics and you know morality and stuff like that well i don't really know if you call it that but you get what I'm saying. Like, I mean, then you can you can judge it based off that. But if we're just sitting here talking about, you know, him not playing games. And I've seen him go hard on, you know, guys. It's even in the NFL, NFL with, with Josh Gordon, you know, with the weed. Right? I mean, he does go, you know. I know I understand why some, some players, he seems to think he goes harder on others. And I just think he goes hard on the guys that you guys like to listen to. You know what I mean? Because you guys obviously listen to it. You guys listen to it, and then you complain about it. So, essentially, you're, you know, you're reaffirming his behavior, you know. So, who's the culprit, right? But I do suggest you guys read it, especially if you're a sports fan and, and you watch him. Why wouldn't you want to get to know someone that you're watching, you know, in order to get more context and be able to understand where he's kind of coming from with this whole thing and and how um, when he's talking about Carmen on TV and you're like, oh, who's Carmen? You know, and you know that if you know by now, you should know that his sister loves to cook. And those, and that's his sister that really, really, you know, um, gets on him, you know. Uh, so you have to understand how they're all older and you, you have to, you, like I said, it's just, it's just something for you to know. It's just something for you to know if you want to get to know the, the man behind the mic. Um, but also it's, um, it's funny because he's actually put a lot of people on too, when it comes to his show on first take, when you think about JJ Reddick and I like JJ's brilliant basketball mind. I see him on a coaching staff sooner than later. I've been saying that. I think I'm just trying to speak it into, you know, fruition because he's off the charts, man. He, he knows what he's talking about. He has the respect of other guys in the league which is why he's sitting down with different guys nowadays. You know, Ryan Clark, and you see what he's doing with the pivot and the guys, you know, with uh, Fred Taylor and Shannon Crowder, um, with Kendrick Perkins, Swagoo, Mina Kimes, Dan Olarski, with the way he keeps going on about his wife sitting in the back and how she needs first class tickets. And, you know, it's just all fun and games. Like, it's great. And Monica McNutt. You know, uh, Kimberly, uh, Martin, all these guys, like, they're all a product of first take. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I know they've come from different places. And if you do more research, they um, they have their own journey and their own story. And I'm, I'm sure. But I mean, first take is def is such a major platform that if he puts you on there, pe other people are going to take notice. And then when they have, and then you see them branch out and get their own podcast, people like me, they're going to listen, they're going to subscribe, right? And they're going to get to know them. So I'm just saying, like, Stephen A gets this personality, he gets this rep of being like a selfish guy. It's all about him, all about me. I'm like, I don't know, man. He, he He's putting together a winning show. A lot of people said he wouldn't be doing good after Max and the whole thing. And he also mentions that in the book as well, so... Um, and on also, um, Molly, um, Kiram, he's put together like an all-star cast when it comes to talking about the NBA and the NFL, you know, I mean, <laughs> I 
See for yourself. I enjoyed it once again. Straight shooter. Stephen A. Smith. I respect you. I salute you. You've done a lot. Keep up the good work. And to my fans, I only ask God to remember one thing. Losses equals life lessons. Peace, guys. Gotta be true to yourself. yourself. In a the world, there's nothing else. nothing else. Gotta play the game right. Gotta make your path. You scratch, you dig, you lay in your ground. You busting your rounds. Nobody gonna stop you. No ops, no cops. Everything about you looking good. You good, she good. Y'all people really wanna know the reason. What's that? It's that ripple effect. That's just that ripple, ripple. That's just that ripple effect. What you do, come back, come triple. back, triple.